Madam Mayor, I'll give the floor to you. All right, thank you. Um, so, hello everybody, thanks for joining us. Um, as you saw last night, um, Chief Ryan Lee was confirmed as Boise's next police chief beginning on July 1st, 2020. Um, I'm really excited to welcome him to the community and look forward to the partnership with him and the department as we um, continue to keep our community safe. Um, Chief Lee has extensive experience having served in Portland for 20 years. And after conducting a nationwide search that included um, multiple community panels, more than we've had in the past, as I understand it, and we're confident in Chief Lee's abilities to lead this department um, and work with our city to keep our residents safe. Chief, your strong commitment to public safety, um, your thoughtful leadership, um, especially in this time is more than welcome and we look forward to welcoming you to Boise. Chief Lee brings a desire to build on the great relationship that Boise Police Department has with our community. And he's a proponent of transparency, accountability and service um, to people um, and, to, and to the community in which he lives. I've noticed um, in his resume and learning more about him that Chief Lee is a champion of community partnerships, working in collaboration with residents and the police. And now more than ever, it's important that we have a relationship builder in this office and that's what he is. And I would like to point out too that in Portland, he was active in mentoring at-risk youth and served on the boards of many um, community nonprofits. I fully expect that he and his family will do the same here. And um, because as we have all seen, when you give your heart to Boise, um, she wraps her arms around you. Um, and so look forward to having um, Chief Lee and his wife um, active members of our community. And then I wanna say just um, before introducing Chief Lee, um, um, I wanna extend a heartfelt thank you to acting chief Ron Weiniger, who led the department for the last, what is it now, six weeks since um, acting chief, um, acting chief Masterson has re retired. So as you all know, chief Bones retired in October. Um, chief, the former chief Masterson came back um, to lead the department in the interim um, and then retired himself in April for a second time. Um, and Ron Weiniger, you have been an incredible partner in the last weeks as as you've been leading as active chief so thank you very much um, and with that really this today is an opportunity for us to introduce chief lee to the community i'd ask that the chief um join now he, i think i believe he has some things that he wanted to say um, and then of course he and i are available for questions thank you madam mayor uh first of all i I just want to express my thanks for the press taking the time uh, and this opportunity to speak with all of you. I know that we're streaming this live. And so for many members of the community, as well as the press, this may be sort of the first introduction to me, despite some of the uh, my resume being summed up in the press here a bit. So just a little bit about me uh, from a professional standpoint, as the mayor mentioned, I've been a professional police officer here in Portland, Oregon for about 20 years now. Uh, I rose through the ranks. I started out as a community police officer. Uh, years ago, I served just a small district, a small neighborhood in the city of Portland, and I've risen through the ranks to serve as the assistant chief of police, both over the operations side of the organization and the services side of the organization. I've had assignments in patrol, investigative assignments, and really now running sort of the back office side of the organization. And it's giving me uh, an incredible look into what it takes to run a large, complex organization, police organization for a significant size city. Um, so I'm well suited, well equipped uh, to serve as your chief of police from that professional standpoint. From really the education piece, uh, if you haven't read the bios yet, I hold a master's of criminal justice from Boston University. I've got my police executive certificate from the Oregon Department, uh, Public Safety Standards and Training, Oregon's rough equivalency to Idaho's post. Uh, it also serves fire, so it's a, a little bit larger organization. I'm also a graduate of the Major City Chiefs Association Police Executive Leadership Institute. Um, but as the mayor mentioned above that, I'm a family man. I've been married 25 years to the most gracious woman uh, that I could possibly ever meet. Uh, she has given me two wonderful children. I've got a 21-year-old son who's a senior at the Air Force Academy 
and a uh, 15-year-old daughter who's in high school. Um, and my family and I are absolutely excited to be able to make Boise our new home and join the community. Um, I realize some of you are probably wondering why I've got a successful career going on here in Portland. Why would I step away and uh, take this opportunity in Boise? And it seems a little silly to have to tell all of you that because you live there. You know what a wonderful place it is. Um, but it is an absolutely amazing community. I had two very good dear friends of mine uh, that I got to know here in Portland over the last 15 years. They made a decision to move back to the Boise area. That's where they were originally from. And I, I quipped as they were leaving, if the chief of police job in Boise ever opens up, please let me know. And lo and behold, about two weeks after they moved back, the opportunity presented itself. Uh, they, they called me and they said, you've got to come out here. You've got to look at the community. I felt obligated to look at it uh, on my friend's behalf. And as I came there, I was just uh, overwhelmed by it. Everybody that I met there was gracious and kind and welcoming. Uh, it's an amazingly beautiful and spectacular place. There's everything outdoors you could possibly love. There's deep culture, deep diversity there. It, it was it's just the amazing community and the opportunity to serve and to help protect and preserve a city like that. Uh, it, it just felt like a calling. It was the right opportunity, the right place at the right time in my life. I, I couldn't say no. Um, I have to fully admit that when the telephone call came and it was down to two candidates, I there was a little sink in my heart as I was nervous about whether or not I was going to say I got the job. Um, and uh, I had to be professional on the phone call, but there may have been some some whooping in my office as soon as uh, I hung up the phone. I was incredibly excited for this opportunity. Um, I really want to emphasize that one of the things that I have from an experience standpoint professionally is I've served here up in the Pacific Northwest and I've watched cities, particularly uh, in Portland, uh, my colleagues in Seattle. I've watched as some of these cities have grown rapidly, much as what's challenging uh, Boise as it's expanding. And I've seen some of that, that ability for it to feel like your home, your hometown fade if it's not very carefully watched and managed by our public officials and our stewards. And it's my desire, my strong desire, to make sure that the police services and the connections to the community stay there, that this still feels like the Boise that you all know and love. That's one of the top priorities, man. I believe that community policing is the heart of making that happen. Um, that is a large part of what drew me to the Boise Police Department. Uh, it, it has a strong track record of investment in community policing. And it's a top priority of their department, of my department now. Um, it's also well known as a very professional organization. And so I look forward to the opportunity to really build upon the successes that they've had, to learn from the community, to learn from the department, to learn from the leadership of the city, and really uh, ingrain myself in your community. And so I think with that, Madam Mayor, unless you have some objection, I think it would probably be an appropriate time to open it up for questions. That's great, thank you, Chief. I have a question for Chief Lee from Haley Harding. Please. Hi, Hi. Um, welcome to Boise. Um, my question is you're billed as an expert on large scale events and public order policing, but the Portland Police Bureau has been sued multiple times for the way it has handled um, demonstrations, including as recently as last week. What do you have to say about that? And what should Boiseans know about what that means for your leadership as you start leading our city or help leading our city? So there's a couple of things I will, I've got to say sort of upfront here. One is I'm still a serving assistant chief of police with the city of Portland until July 1. So I, I shouldn't comment on anything that's actively going on. I think it would it would be inappropriate in my position. But in a larger sense to that general concept, I've advocated there's, um, I would encourage you to look online. There's plenty of interviews with me online. I've advocated for some time that really outreaching to the, outreaching to activists, helping to form a relationship with those people that are willing to lawfully express and desiring to lawfully express their First Amendment rights to help facilitate those opportunities, that that is really the most successful model to managing large-scale events, especially those that are free speech events. And I'm sorry if my eyes are moving around the screen. Everybody keeps doing the Zoom jumble around. I'm trying to track names here. Oh, um, Ryan, Ryan, we can't see you. Really? This is terrible because I can see myself on the video feed. Maybe it's just me. 
Is anybody in the press able to see me or? Oh, nope, it sounds like it's just me. Um, I need to change my view. <laughs> Other people can see you. Excuse me, sorry, I didn't mean to. Um, I just froze. Nope, not, not a problem. You had me very concerned there. I thought, oh my, uh, technology is not being our friend right now. Um, but really it's that opportunity to, to connect so. with those people that are uh, wanting to exercise their lawful First Amendment rights. I think it really reflects the sort of the larger question of my policing philosophy, which is to help connect and understand the different voices that are out there to help listen and hear those voices and help find ways to facilitate and find the common ground that's essential. Uh, Joey Pechtel from KTVB has a question, Chief. Hi, yes, Chief. Uh, just wanted to ask, quickly ask you about your thoughts on the calls, you know, from the protests going on around the country to defund the police. And, you know, just wanted to get your thoughts on that and see how you would feel about, uh, you know, some funding if it were to be removed from BPD and if it were moved to, you know, other social services or youth programs or affordable housing. What are your thoughts on these calls to defund the police and take that funding and reallocate it to other services? I understand the sentiment behind it, but I think it's a challenge of a modern city. The The need for police service is not going to disappear, especially the critical police service. And if we want police service that reflects what the community wants, there needs to be that opportunity for the officers to engage. Um, it's community policing, while it's very successful in driving crime rates and other things down, it's very resource intensive. And so I think we need to be very mindful and thoughtful about police funding. We need to make sure that we have adequate funding to properly train and educate the officers that we're onboarding. We need to be mindful and deliver about who we're bringing in to the organization. But to that end, I think we also have to recognize that the driving factors of crime in the United States really are you know, poverty and addiction and that it's appropriate for us to partner with organizations and groups to help address those issues. Hi, Chief Lee. So I had a question just about once you're sworn in, is there anything you've already identified as your first priority once you're serving in our Boise community and how you plan to meet community leaders and improve relationships? So you're a little broken up. I want to make sure that I heard your question right. It was really, is there a first priority when I arrive as the Chief of Boise and how do I intend to connect with community members? Was that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, Thank you. I would have told you that my first priority would be to get to know the membership of the Boise Police Department as well as to get to know the prominent members of the community and our civic leaders, um, which really ties to that second part of how am I going to do that? Uh, I'll remind you that when I started this process, it was eight months ago and the world looked very differently. Um, I think that's gonna be part of the challenge. Uh, we're, Idaho is, in a position where some of the restrictions um, are being eased related to the coronavirus uh, that will make it a little bit easier for me to connect to the community. But I think it's really a strategy of going out and being accessible and available, talking to as many members of the community from all walks of life and from all corners and getting to know what the community needs from its police, what they expect from its police, and to getting to know the department and how the department envisions themselves as delivering that service. Priority number one is to understand that relationship, that dynamic, and how that interaction is playing out, and to make sure that it's in the best course for everybody's interest. I have a question from Tess Goodwin from Boise Public Radio for Chief Lee. Please. Hi, Chief Lee. Um, I was just wondering if you had any plans to increase training in areas such as de-escalation or proper use of force? I think looking at use of force and looking at de-escalation is incredibly important in modern policing. I'm not aboard yet. I intend when I get aboard to take a comprehensive look at the training that's delivered in the Boise Police Department, make an assessment about whether or not any of that training could be built upon and improved, and to try and seek out the appropriate subject matter experts if necessary to bring that training to Boise. And then Mayor McLean, I have a question uh, that was sent in from Trevor Fay from KBOI, uh, CBS2 News. 
Uh, he said, can Mayor McLean address whether or not she supports defunding the police department? Sure, I appreciate that. And sorry, everybody, for the technical difficulties. My computer overheated, and then you had that awful view of me frozen, and here I am back now on somebody else's computer. Um, uh, was it was it Trevor? I don't see Trevor, but happy to answer the question and want to say clearly that public safety is my first priority. We have to have a safe city if we're going to have a city where everyone can thrive. Um, so no, I do not um, intend to... Um, proposed defunding of the police, but instead am in full support of our police department as they seek to provide services to this community to keep our residents safe. And as part of this, at, the, at this time in history and this moment in our community and country, with, and especially with a new chief joining us, it is the perfect time, a time we absolutely must review policies, make sure that we're doing everything that we can um, as a city community and department to ensure that everyone remains safe. Um, and, and that includes working with and listening to the community, but also working in partnership with our police department, supporting them as they actively um, work to keep our residents safe. Uh, Mayor, I have one additional question from uh, Joey Prechtel for Chief Lee. Wait, I just KTVD. also wanted to um, get your thoughts on the eight can't wait uh, initiative that you know is making its rounds through across social media. I know uh, BPD already has six of those eight initiatives, and then the two it does not have are you know the banning of chokeholds as well as the uh, continuum of force. I believe. Um, what are your thoughts on banning chokeholds and then having that continuum of force? I need to really get aboard the Boise Police Department and review their policies, their training, their tactics uh, before I can weigh in on what's, uh, you know, referred to as chokeholds. Um, the use of force continuum, I think, is a little bit easier subject to speak to and that really based off of case law, why a continuum makes logical sense to people that there's a, a gradual step. It's really the Graham standard is that Re objectively reasonable as the standard by which we have to examine law enforcement use of force. And so police departments have moved away from a continuum because it creates some uh, artificial perceptions of how a force encounter might occur. And I think that there needs to be a conversation around what the public expects and wants when they're asking for the continuum versus necessarily what by law police departments are using in, in force and in their force training. So I think I need to get aboard and look a little bit at the policies, but that's a a very broad sort of answer to your question. Hopefully that it gives you some idea of where I sit though, sir. Thank you, Chief. And then Haley Harding has another question for Mayor McLean. Oh, hi, hi, Haley. Hello. Um, so yesterday there was some, during city council, there was some discussion about what exactly went into the decision-making process and who is involved in that process. And I was hoping you could just walk us through a little bit more because I know Lisa Sanchez said she was very or she didn't say she was very upset, but she expressed concern that she was not involved in the process. Sure. And as you know, the process started um, prior to my administration beginning. But what we did was um, we developed several different layers of panels. Um, in fact, the first the first panels, chiefly, you were you were here in person. There was a, a group of people that actually got to talk with you and quite a few others um, early on in the process. Um, then I believe they whittled it down to four finalists. Um, I interviewed those four um, and then proposed two finalists that then through Zoom participated in three or four community panels. Um, and then after that, we offered council members the opportunity to um, talk directly with Chief Lee um, while we were in the background checking process so that there was a chance for everyone to get to know him via Zoom, of course, prior to the vote last night. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Tommy Simmons with um, Boise Weekly has a question for Chief Lee. Hi, Chief. Um, I just kind of wanted to ask, when you were um, involved in the Portland Police Bureau's leadership, was there anything you did that you felt made the police department more transparent and more um, open and accessible to the city's residents? and is there anything like that that you might want to want to bring to Boise as well? So, 
I made significant efforts in developing data transparency for the police bureau. So you're free to look at them. They're uh, city websites, but you can look at the, the data information that's available. We have a series of data dashboards that are still opening up, but I, I believe that the public should know what the police are doing as much as is reasonably feasible. So we're getting ready to throw, I think we turned the switch on either last week, or the week before, things have been a little busy lately. Um, for even overtime dashboards, people can see how we're spending overtime for officers. Uh, they can see crime rates in the city, they can see police response times, they can see use of force data. I believe that level of transparency um, in the information age is important for policing because if we're going to have meaningful conversations with the public about how they want to see policing occur in their city, they need to know the actual data information so that we can sit down and have a conversation about how we can best both work towards solutions. So. I look forward to the opportunity to learn what levels of data are made transparent and the frequency of the transparency to the public and to see if there's opportunities to improve there in Boise. And then uh, I don't have any additional press questions. Um, Mayor or Chief Lee, if there are any additional statements you'd like to leave the press with at this time, and then we will wrap up and all uh, media, you can get into direct touch with me for any additional needs. Thank you. Chief? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. The only thing I'd like to add is for those of you out there in the press, I look forward to getting to know you personally. I intend to stop by and uh, visit with each of you and figure out what I can do to improve the relationship with the press and the police department, figure out what information you're hoping to get from us and how we can help you with it. And I say that very sincerely as the son of a person who was a 40-year photojournalist for a newspaper. I incredibly value the press and the media and its important role in the free society and i want to make sure we have a strong relationship so i appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today Madam Mayor. And I'll, thank you chief for joining us today really appreciate it and i want to thank stephen and lavana also for joining us um to be able to provide yes thank you um provide sign language for all of our residents um might so that you might be able to access this it's always wonderful to have you with us um thank you all for joining us today we'll be back in two weeks of course for the regular press huddle um, and again just i look forward to welcoming chief lee and his family to our community um, and getting to work on the very real issues um, that we need to address and you know as the chief lee mentioned today transparency, um, open data, um, community engagement, partnership with the media, all those things are really important to us as a, a city and here at City Hall. So um, thanks Lee, Chief Lee, I look forward to seeing you soon and all of course available for everyone in two weeks for our next huddle. Have a great day.